Well, Ivan, I really enjoyed your film last night. I love being here and, and watching it and enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Why, when we're here in Hollywood, which is, after all, the film capital of the world, we remember suddenly that filmmaking is a real business, and it's big business. And it's fascinating to see you being deferred to and being treated like a big, big shot in this film capital of the world. Are you a movie <laughs> mogul now? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess I can get to do stuff now and, and make films the way I want to. Yeah, I'm doing all right. And you like it? Sure. You certainly are doing all right. But as I say, it's, it's fascinating to sit there at a screening of a movie that you have nothing to do with and the whole press all over the world sort of is kept waiting till you arrive. That's what, success. What? Oh, I didn't have, what, <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, <laughs> Oh, it's that other screening? Yes, oh. yes. Um, ten years ago, more or less, when we were talking, you were uh, having difficulty financing or completing the financing on one of your movies. You were oh, broke, yeah. mm -hmm. in debt. Today, you're, uh, you're a millionaire. Your, your movies make hundreds of millions of dollars. How much of that is luck? How much of that success is luck? Oh, I'm sure a great deal <laughs> is luck. I've never tried to analyze uh, why and what it is about making films, uh, the, the films that I've made, <laughs> what makes them successful. I just try real hard, and I'm really obsessive about it. I work harder than anyone I know, and uh, I really care about what I do. You work harder doing what? Uh, finishing the film. I mean, I work very hard at getting a very good script, at casting it, at working on it while we produce, you know, during production, and really finally editing it so that only the best is left. Well, what about the idea? It seems to me that, <coughs> that you have a particular genius in creating your ideas. You do get the ideas for the films, don't you? Yeah, well, well, the concept is the most important thing uh, because if you're wrong, it doesn't matter how good your script is, how smart your casting was, and what a nice job you did uh, directing the film. If basically you're wrong in the initial concept, somehow the film will never turn out right, and, uh, or the audience will never turn out either. And uh, I think I've been fortunate in sort of honing in on good conceptual ideas that turn out to be interesting movies or even Broadway shows because that it has really worked in both mediums. Well, that, that's the fascinating thing about you, the fact that you do have a, a concept, an idea as I call it. Where do you get these things from? Where does it come from? Well, they come from at different times and different places. This film, Stripes, uh, came uh, as you may know, we had the uh, opening of Meatballs. The world premiere was in Toronto uh, because we made the film in Ontario. And the morning of the premiere of Meatballs, as I was shaving at my parents' house because I was staying there, it hit me. It just said, I, uh, the, almost the entire movie from beginning to end just uh, flashed. And uh, as a matter of fact, I was there with Paramount at that time because Paramount was distributing Meatballs. And I mentioned it to one of the vice presidents, and I said, well, what do you think of this idea? They said, that's a great idea. We'll, we'll make it. And uh, we ended up not making it at Paramount for one reason or another, but at Columbia. And uh, it, that's when it started. And I actually started working at it r right away. I talked to the two writers who started it, Len Bloom and Dan Goldberg. And they liked it a lot, and uh, they weren't doing anything, so they started then. And uh, then involved Harold Ramis, the third writer. And you cast it in your mind almost immediately, too? Uh, no, actually not. But did you kind of create it with Bill Murray in mind? Uh, not initially. But he quickly became part of it. Since we're, you're, you're dealing in humor, and you, you always are dealing in humor pretty well, you had, you had a little fling at, at horror pictures. As a matter of fact, come to think of it, you're quite versatile. You just haven't gone into historical stuff, as, as a, have you? Not that I remember. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Do you find that audiences are becoming more conservative? Do you have to watch yourself now that you don't offend people? Uh, I don't worry about it. I never thought of it. I, um, I still only try to make the best film I possibly can that will entertain me, first of all, and work for me as best as it can. 
and uh, invariably when I've done that, it has turned out that it also happens to work for audiences to a great extent. Well, it certainly has to a few hundreds of millions of uh, people. Uh, nowadays, because of the cost of movies, I guess, and the high interest rates and all those attendant problems, there are, I guess there always have been, enormous surveys done on, on audiences, mm -hmm. which always fascinate me because they're usually the people that know, that do the least creative work have the demographs, I guess they call it, at the tip of their fingers. But do you make, you say you make movies for yourself, but do you also make movies for a particular audience? Do you have an audience in mind? Well, the film going audience, it turns out, turns out seems to have the same sort of viewpoint that I do. And, uh, and I am a film goer. I mean, I do pay money and go to the movies like a lot of other people. And it seems that demographically speaking, the moviegoers sort of fall into uh, an age group between 15 and 30, let's say, roughly, in terms of more of them go to a movie 15 that... 15 and 30. 15 to 30. Uh -huh. and, um, and I guess that's who, who my films have appealed to so far. What happens when you're 40? Uh, when I'm 40? Uh -huh. Well, I'm yeah. older than that age group already, but um, I, I don't know. I'll just keep on making the films and hope that they're going to work. I think the audience is getting older, by the way, as the baby bubble, you know, the post-war bubble gets older, that audience gets older. So because they've stayed uh, with the movies, unlike the 50s generation, you know, the adults of the, or the teenagers of the 50s, who stopped going to the movies. Uh, it seems the kids that were born after the war and uh, became the movie audience of the 60s and 70s have stayed with it. They still go to the movies when they're over 30. I th yes, that's. That yeah, I think to that's be. what they tell me anyway. But. Yes, well, it, it seems to be proven in your case. Is there such a thing as a as a Canadian sense of humor? Uh, I don't know. I'm a Czechoslovakian by birth, although. But you came my, when you were what four and a half. Yes, and I've uh, I've grown up and gone to school in Canada. I uh, a lot of us have done quite well in humor, both actors and producers and directors. And I guess, I don't know what it is. It's also Torontonian. It's not even really Canadian. It's, uh, most of us grew up in Toronto, much like a lot of the uh, comic talent uh, grew up in Chicago in the United States. We're both second cities, you know. Uh, Toronto's the, until uh, I think just recently, was the second city of Canada. And, um, and uh, Chicago is the second city of uh, the United States. Maybe that has some relevance, but I don't know. Probably does have some hmm. relevance. Uh, uh, Ivan, are you going to stay now in Cal in California? Are you going to live and work in Hollywood? Well, I've lived here really for about two years now, two and a half years, because as a director, uh, if I'm going to see my family at all, they have to be living in the same place where I make my film. And uh, but I, I still want to continue making films in Canada, and I am. I mean, Meatballs two years ago was made there, and I'm presently making a film in Canada called Heavy Metal. Have you finished that yet? Uh, hopefully, we'll be finished real shortly <laughs> because it's being released in about oh, a month or yeah. two. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I guess so. Everybody's talking a lot about that. That's going to be very interesting. Having well, that's really different than anything I've done, and um, hopefully, it'll work out. It's uh, it's also quite humorous and quite spectacular in the way it looks, and is unlike any other animated film that it's ever been made. Uh, which probably is good for it because there haven't really been any successful animated films since Walt Disney. No, there, there haven't uh, been the successful ones, but I understand your subject. Well, outside of what's his name had, uh, had a successful one that, that was very much into sex, and yours is supposed to be very much into sex too. No, it is sexy. Uh, I'd say ours is mostly into comedy and fantasy. It's sword and sorcery and, um, and, uh, science fiction and horror. Uh, it's a lot of things. It's five separate stories that are linked together. And it's not, uh, there are some uh, undressed people in it. <laughs> <laughs> Drawn undressed people, which actually is much more sexy than uh, seeing live people undressed. Uh, where did you get this idea? Were you? <laughs> well, this one came to me because uh, I was, uh, I had produced, uh, with Maddie Simmons of uh, the National Lampoon's Animal House. And Maddie Simmons is the chairman of the 
of that magazine. And they also publish Heavy Metal magazine. And uh, they were having some trouble in getting their film together, and he asked me if I might help them in setting it up as a Canadian film. And then as we got involved, I finally just bought the film from them, and uh, they're involved as licensors. And the, uh, it just sounded like a terrific idea when he started telling me about it. You know, I started reading the magazine uh, more seriously, and uh, I thought it might work. Well, we're looking forward to seeing that. But right now, we're still into stripes. And also, I, I, I'm curious about you. You've been living here for two years. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering, are you into this? Is, is Hollywood still a place full of opulent parties and fancy cars and gorgeous boats and all that sort of thing? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> I have, you know, I have a three and a half year old child, and our, we just had two weeks ago another uh, baby girl. and. I'm a family guy. <laughs> I stay at home. I haven't been to a Hollywood party as you describe it. It's, it's nice to live here because the weather is nice and it's close to work. And I'm starting to meet a lot of people and, and uh, make a lot of friendships really with a lot of people who aren't actually in the business as well as with a lot of the community. And uh, it's gratifying to become part of the community and to be recognized. You certainly are recognized. Uh, is is the film business like being a doctor or a lawyer? Do, do film people, direct, other directors and producers call you and say, hey, I, I saw your movie, you must come over and have, a, and have dinner with us some night? Or is there that sort of camaraderie? Camar yes, you know. to a certain extent. It's mostly as a result of meeting someone on the lot or, you know, it's not out of the blue, I haven't anyway gotten a call uh, you know, from another director saying how much I love your work and let's get together. But there is, when you meet, uh, friendships occur that way. When you, uh, you've worked now with a lot of the, um, what is it, the Saturday Night Live mm -hmm. people, was this, were you involved in that, actually involved in that group? Not, or? not in Saturday Night Live. I was involved with that group before they got on Saturday Night Live. I had a show off-Broadway called The National Lampoon Show. Uh, which starred uh, John Belushi and Bill Murray and Gilda Radner, Harold Ramis, and Bill Murray's brother, Brian Dole Murray, also a very talented man. And um, they, uh, it, was, it was just a comedy review. And most of them then went on to do Saturday Night Live. Harold Ramis uh, worked with me to write or co-write Animal House. And uh, since then, I've you know, worked with most of them again. Are you going to use them as kind of a rep company? Would that be something you'd like to do? Well, I, they're all uh, amazingly talented actors, and I really like to work with them. So I, I don't think they would like to think of themselves as a rep company because they're all sort of individuals, and they all have it, you know, mm -hmm. individual desires and talents and have their own careers. But uh, I work with a number of them, and I hope to work with all of them. Will you ever work with Mr. Cronenberg again? We've talked about it a lot. Um, uh, we see each other quite regularly. We're good friends, and um, it would be fun. One of the things lately is that I'm really stopping to produce uh, for others, um, except for the animated film where I'm just producing, but because the producing role is much like a directorial role. I'm enjoying directing a, a lot more. I stopped directing after really my first one because I was so bad at it for a while and uh, had to learn. Uh, properly, and uh, I'm starting to get the hang of it now, and I like it. <laughs> and uh, so it takes so long; it t uh, one film takes so much of my time that I'd rather just spend it uh, sp spend it directing it myself than, you know. Well, it's first. certainly been fascinating to to follow your career over these years, and it's thank you, been, Claire. You've been very kind. I uh, really have enjoyed it, and look forward to many, many more accomplishments. Thank you. Thank you very much.